Up next on Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we're off to a place of beauty and culture that's risen again. It's back and better than ever, New Orleans. The future has never been brighter, and this city knows how to celebrate. Join me for an exclusive behind-the-scenes tour of how Mardi Gras is made. And then take a walk on the wild side. Check out the Voodoo Museum. And come face-to-face -face with a real-life voodoo queen. Way down yonder in New Orleans. Then it's just a short drive away to another place on the rebound. The pristine white sand of the Mississippi Gulf Coast. The beauty and the history here will take your breath away. And the people. They are 100% ready to show you some of that famous Southern hospitality. Not to mention the food. Talk about fresh. Cocktail sauce not included. Then finally, it's back to Louisiana for an incredible animal adventure. Isn't it cool to be in a swamp in a rainstorm? I just love this. Turtles and birds and gators, oh my. Jump. Watch these normally quiet critters come to life at feeding time. You always feed them chicken? Chicken and marshmallows. Marshmallows for dessert? That's right. We'll feed some alligators, we'll have a good time. Don't miss it. This week from New Orleans, Mississippi, and Southern Louisiana. New Orleans is a city whose lifestyle and attractions have made it one of the top vacation destinations in the country. Tourism here is not only back, it's better than ever. But you know what? A picture tells a thousand words. So why don't you come with me and I'm gonna show you New Orleans revitalized. Known as the Crescent City because of its location on a curve in the Mississippi River, New Orleans is one of the most unusual cities in the South. It's not only the largest in the state of Louisiana, it boasts a complex cultural heritage. Established as a major port in 1718, it was acquired from the French as part of the Louisiana Purchase. Since then, New Orleans has grown to be one of the largest port cities in the world. The French Quarter is where most of the historical sites and attractions are located, and what most visitors come here to see. Today, the French Quarter's back, and some say better than ever. New Orleans. The people are proud, the history and sights are amazing, the food is fabulous, and the entertainment, legendary. Jackson Square is the heart of the French Quarter with the spires of the St. Louis Cathedral overlooking the river, the Mississippi River. It's been the main thoroughfare for centuries, and even today, the boats just keep on rolling along. There it is, the mighty Mississippi. Now, you can't say you've been to New Orleans unless you've been out on the river. You know what? The ferry is the best sightseeing deal in town. It's free going across and only a dollar coming back. Can't beat that. The views from the river are terrific. And it's on the opposite shore that you'll discover one of the city's most famous attractions. While New Orleans is known for lots of different things, the one thing that everyone knows is Mardi Gras, the largest free party on earth. If you can't be here for the party itself, see it up close and personal at Blaine Kern's Mardi Gras World. This is where the history of Mardi Gras comes alive. What an experience. A visit to the float room for the crew of Orpheus is amazing. But what's a crew, you ask? Well, as I discovered, a crew is basically a club, and these clubs sponsor all the floats in the parades. The crew members dress in costume, ride on board the floats, throw the beads from the floats, and host incredible balls and parties during Mardi Gras. And just look at the size of these props. The parades of Mardi Gras vary in theme. Some are satirical, some fantasy. There are sports parades, political parades, the list goes on and on. For two weeks prior to Fat Tuesday, the first day of Mardi Gras, you can enjoy the elaborate costumes, floats, flying beads, marching bands, and street performances of Mardi Gras. And although Mardi Gras has earned an infamous reputation of being adults only, that's only in certain areas. Mardi Gras can also be a family event. Kids love to stand on the parade sidelines with the entire family and watch the fun. And there's nothing more thrilling than catching the throws. The free gifts and colored beads tossed from the floats. Everyone yells out, throw me something, mister, and no one goes home empty-handed. So, whether or not you get to see the real Mardi Gras, you can always catch a little Mardi Gras magic right here. Ah, the Big Easy. There isn't another city in the world quite like New Orleans. It's truly one of a kind. Religion in New Orleans is as varied as the people themselves. 
derived from the original French, African, Native American, and Spanish settlers' various beliefs. Some of these are traditional, and some take a walk on the wild side. You know, one thing I love about New Orleans is the spiritual side of it. Whether it's religion or superstition, there's one thing for sure. People here really believe. So, for a behind the scenes look at one of those beliefs, check out the Voodoo Museum. Located on Dumain Street in the French Quarter, it was opened in 1972 by a New Orleans native Creole, Charles Gandolfo. Here, you can see a wide variety of voodoo artifacts, paintings, and statuettes. But first, what exactly is voodoo? Voodoo is the, the belief, but Grigri is the magic. It can either be the process or it can be the object itself. In this case, you're looking at some of the objects. Contrary to a popular misconception, voodoo is not an evil practice. Actually, 90% of Grigri is used for love. Grigri can also be used for power and domination, fortune and luck, or undoing another's Grigri. Wow. And if you're hoping to work your own magic, visit the altar room where you can leave small objects, notes, or tokens to petition the voodoo spirits for favors. Now, many of the spirits are Catholic saints who have merged with voodoo spirits over time, and the painting that watches over all is none other than the widow Paris Marie Laveau. It's the famous Marie Laveau, the famous voodoo queen of New Orleans. There were voodoo queens before her, voodoo queens after her, but this is the most famous one. She was a free woman of color who was born in 1801. And if you're planning a winter holiday trip to New Orleans, which I highly recommend, you could come face to face with a modern Marie Laveau. I'm a spiritual healer and herbalist here in New Orleans. If you notice the lovely Tignon, it is the headdress of queens. And I believe there is a song of this time about the queens in New Orleans. This is heaven right here on earth with our beautiful queens way down yonder in New Orleans. Up next, I can definitely verify the Gulf Coast has risen again. Come on in, the water's fine and clean. You won't believe how gorgeous it is here. On the pristine white sand of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, how fresh do you like your seafood? It is a tasty fish. How about right out of the ocean? Cocktail sauce not included. Don't miss it. Here's a tip. Mardi Gras is one of the busiest times of the year, and many popular hotels and restaurants sell out a year in advance, so reserve early. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and don't forget to check out lauramackenzietv.com. I can definitely verify the Gulf Coast has risen again. I'm Laura McKenzie, and you can take it from me. I've seen it all. I've been on the beaches. The white sand is pristine. In fact, all along the Gulf Coast are attractions and entertainment. It's fantastic. Oh, and the people. They are 100% ready to show you some of that famous Southern hospitality. So I'm here, and I'm having a blast. Just follow the winding Mississippi River south to the proud state of Mississippi, home to blues, barbecues, and a vibrant seaside culture with an unbeatable spirit. When Hurricane Katrina devastated this area several years ago, Mississippi residents bonded and rallied. And I discovered that even after the oil spill, the Gulf Coast is not just back, it's back better than ever. The Mississippi Gulf Coast spans over 50 miles along a gorgeous stretch of beach from Bay St. Louis to Pascagoula. Known for its clean white sand, the beach is a great place to bring the kids for a day in the sun. Here you can rent beach chairs, umbrellas, and toys. Just bring your towel and sunscreen and enjoy. This is the place to discover a beautiful part of Mississippi. Renovated antebellum homes, centuries old oak trees, and loads of family attractions. Many of the historical sites and monuments have been restored. And one of those is a gracious old southern mansion on Biloxi Beach. Beauvoir House was the home of Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederacy, and you can't get more southern than that. Beauvoir means beautiful view, and its wide wraparound porch has one of the best views of the Gulf. Inside is an authentic glimpse into the 19th century life of our only Confederate president and the home where he wrote his memoirs. 
totally restored, it's also home to the brand new 2011 Jefferson Davis Presidential Library and Museum. Correct me if I'm wrong, but lighthouses aren't usually built in the middle of a four-lane highway, are they? Well, actually, the Biloxi Lighthouse was here long before the cars arrived. Built in 1848, it's one of the first cast iron lighthouses in the South. It's also known for its women light keepers, especially one named Maria Youngins who tended the light for over 50 years. Standing strong as the highway was built around it, it's become a symbol of the city's resolve and resilience after Katrina. There's lots to see here on the coast, and everything looks new and better than ever. Here's a bit of trivia. Did you know that Biloxi is known as the Gulf's hot spot to fish? It is, truly, truly. That's the southern way of saying, certainly, yes, absolutely. And now that the coast is clear of oil, the locals will happily show you all the tricks of the seafood trade. If you want a behind-the-scenes look at where that shrimp cocktail comes from, then this is really fun. You can actually go out on a real shrimp boat. You watch them throw the nets, they haul in the shrimp. You'll see dolphins and seagulls. It's great. Oh, cocktail sauce not included. Shrimping and fishing boats have been cruising the coast, riding the rivers, and making their way up and down the low-lying bayous of Mississippi for over a century. In fact, in 1903, Biloxi was considered the seafood capital of the world. Generations of families have made their living from fishing, shrimping, cooking, and serving the seafood here on the Gulf. Seafaring Captain Mike Moore has owned and operated strictly fishing charters for 14 years. And with that much experience, who better to find the shrimping hotspots? So, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, we're on board faster than you can say black and snapper po'boy. The fish that we're fishing for is what we know as white trout. Some people know as sand trout. It's first cousin to the speckled trout. And it What's is a tasty fish. In just over an hour, Strictly Fishing takes you right off the coast in search of red snapper, speckled trout, tiger shark, and lots and lots of shrimp. As you head out to sea, you'll see dolphins and seagulls and even, surely, the pelican. You'll learn all about the shrimping biz as well as some Biloxi history. And as Captain Mike says himself, he'll show you where the shrimp go to school. I bet that shrimp creole is pretty darn fresh. Ah, fried catfish and baked seafood bread served up right on the bayou. It doesn't get any more authentic than that. And if you'd like a closer look at the bayou and backcountry, head a few miles west to the Pascagoula River, where flatboats can not only take you into the backcountry, they'll take you back in time. This is where to see old Mississippi, untouched and totally preserved where birds and gators can be viewed in their natural habitat. Bring your camera, this is ecotourism unspoiled. Up next, back to Louisiana for an animal adventure you won't believe. Looking for alligators on a swamp tour in New Orleans. After the rain clears, it's lunchtime. We'll feed some alligators, we'll have a good time. Don't miss it. Here's a tip. You can fly directly into Gulfport, or it's a 90-minute drive from New Orleans. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and don't forget to check out lauramckenzietv.com. Wow. With all these oak trees, it looks almost exactly like what I expected a southern Louisiana sugarcane plantation to look like. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and today I'm in and around southern Louisiana. The United States acquired Louisiana in 1803 as part of the Louisiana Purchase. Named after King Louis XIV, it quickly became an integral part of the U.S. trade economy, with New Orleans providing one of the busiest ports in the new nation. Louisiana is divided into two areas, the northern upland region and the alluvial, the lowland swamps and coastal regions of the south. In the 18th century, the French, Spanish, and African cultures all put their own stamp on everything from language to food, creating a culture that's totally unique. Today, visitors from around the world are drawn here to sample its southern charm, cuisine, and culture. But southern Louisiana is also known for something else, some very unusual adventures. Swamp tour, anyone? Come on down to New Orleans. We'll show you some alligators. We'll feed some alligators. We'll have a good time. 
Cajun Pride Swamp Tours, located an alligator snout away from New Orleans in La Place, Louisiana, offers the ultimate in family fun. Owner Chris Smits and his crew, the Gator Patrol, have been running the swamps for over 13 years, and there's no better alligator wranglers in the biz. All aboard, let's hit the swamp. Exploring the wet, spongy, and narrow channels of the Louisiana swamps is a must-do when you're down here in the bayou. Be sure to bring your camera, you're gonna see a lot. Fascinating wildlife, gnarly old cypress trees, and exotic plant life. But for the main attraction, you gotta watch close. Gators, lying so still they look like fallen cypress branches. But let me tell you, these swamp critters may lie low, but they come to life when it's feeding time. Come on, Boudreaux, over here, baby. You always feed them chicken? Chicken and marshmallows. Marshmallows for dessert. That's right. Well, that's an unusual diet. Yum. But here, even the kids get the rare opportunity to feed the gators. But since gators can't live on chicken and marshmallows alone, they'll also feed on all the other critters of the bayou, including crawfish, birds, nutria, and bullfrogs. They say if you don't like the weather in southern Louisiana, just wait a half hour, it'll change. But well, we had blue sky about an hour ago, and now a thunderstorm. In a half hour, we'll have blue sky again. But isn't it cool to be in the swamp in a rainstorm? I just love this. The element of mystery and romance amidst the thrills and chills of the swamps. And who would believe you're only half an hour from New Orleans? Incredible. Now, your Louisiana adventure doesn't have to stop at the swamps. Add a southern sugarcane plantation to your itinerary for a step back in time. Historic plantations dot the rolling green countryside of southern Louisiana. Many offer guided tours of the grounds and several even operate as bed and breakfast. Given the amazing selection within a short distance, choosing one was difficult. But what with the name and the stellar reputation, I couldn't pass this one up. The Laura Plantation. Sounds like a winner to me. You know what I'm impressed with? Here, you not only see what life was like on a Louisiana sugarcane plantation, you see what life was like for a Creole family on a sugarcane plantation that was totally run by women for four generations. Today, the Laura Plantation offers exceptional guided tours, detailing over 300 years of life on this historical southern property. But the main focus of the Laura's guided tours are the compelling true stories of Creole culture, a non-Anglo lifestyle unique to Louisiana. Creole culture was very practical, and whoever in the family had the brains to run the business did so. Thus, traditional gender roles could be reversed, and the plantation's namesake, Laura, was the fourth woman who ran this plantation as president. The Laura Plantation is a must-see for anyone coming to New Orleans. With its beauty, simplicity, and singular importance to American history and literature, this site is truly a Southern Louisiana standout. Here's a tip. Round trip transportation is usually included in swamp and plantation tours, and they'll pick you up from your hotel. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. There's plenty to see in southern Louisiana, and lucky for me, deciding what to do next is as simple as pecan pie. For another look at a historical southern estate, Longview House and Gardens is a national historic landmark here in New Orleans. Built in the early 1940s for a cotton broker and his wife and heiress to the Sears Roebuck fortune. You can explore these classical revival style buildings and over eight acres of landscape gardens. What's more, these beautiful gardens are seasonal, so Longview House is in bloom year-round. Kids love the Discovery Garden, accessible to children by a bamboo tunnel. It's complete with wagons, watering cans, a turtle exhibit, and stories and songs around the sundial. Just don't tell the kids it's educational, and they'll have a great time. You'll often see busloads of school children who come here to learn about gardening, ecology, and conservation. Donated to the city, Longview was open to the public in 1980. 
A complete setting of house and garden, it's meant to look as if the family is still living there. There's so much to see in New Orleans, and regardless of the season, Southern Louisiana is a fantastic vacation destination. There's history, great architecture, amazing hotels, food to die for, and that incredible New Orleans jazz. This is a great place for everyone in the family. What a great place for a vacation. This place is so much fun. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific place somewhere else around the world. From New Orleans, Mississippi, Southern Louisiana. I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye. For more events that the whole family will enjoy, check out some of the museums here in New Orleans. One of the best is the Audubon Aquarium. Ever wanted to pet a shark or come face to face with a white alligator? Well, here, you can do both. For bird lovers, there's an Amazon rainforest exhibit and a specially designed penguin habitat. And while you're here watching the penguins play, make sure you wave to Maynard and tell him Laura sent you.